Like what almost happened to me a couple weeks ago when my toddler decided to push my camera on a slider that wasn't properly supported on either end. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. And today we're not talking about this beast, but Blackmagic enjoyed my Pocket 6K Pro video from a couple weeks ago so much that they decided to send me out the Ursa Mini Pro 12K for a couple weeks to check out. And I got a lot of cool content uh, planned for this guy. So if you're not already subscribed, you may wanna change that um, because man, this, this thing is something to talk about, let's just say that. But for now, let's get into today's video. So this is a motorized slider from GVM, and I actually haven't talked about sliders on this channel since like early days of this channel. Like, I don't even wanna show the video, cause Oh, color grading. <laughs> and since that video was released, I've been using that same exact slider ever since. And, and over the years, I've seen motorized sliders get better, more features, and obviously there are a ton on the market now. And so what we're talking about today is definitely in the, uh, I'd say lower mid-tier budget of electric sliders, and we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of them, and overall just my thoughts on this slider. I do wanna point out that GVM did send me this slider out uh, to review, but they're not seeing this video before you guys. Uh, they didn't pay me anything, so yeah, thank you for supplying the slider, but this is my honest review. So this right here is a two axis motorized slider. They actually do have a three axis one, uh, which I wish I would have gotten, but they actually were sold out at the time, and so they couldn't send me that one, but that one would give you the tilt action, but just know that today when we go through talking about the remote, the app, um, there is a option to get the tilt action, uh, which would be very useful, but Again, we'll talk about that later. So for everything you see here, the slider, the uh, pan motor, and the remote, and obviously access to the app, you can get for under 500 bucks. Actually, it's on sale. I literally just checked as I'm recording this video. The Amazon listing currently has a $100 off coupon if you just click on it. Um, so you can actually get this entire setup for 400 bucks rather than 500. So depending on how you feel by the end of this video, Again, just know the links are down there if you wanna check it out. So first of all, let's go through some tech specs and build quality points. So this is a 32 inch carbon fiber uh, slider. You definitely have some various mounting points. The biggest one is dead center here, um, which has a bunch of quarter 20s and what, five eights. I always forget the name of that one, but the larger uh, mounting and my power just went out, it's fun. Thankfully, most of these lights are battery operated. So that was weird. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, yeah, and then there's some quarter 20s on the bottoms of the sides of the rail. So that way, if you want to make sure you don't have, uh, you know, if you have a heavier payload and it goes from one end to the other, we've all seen sliders kind of start to tilt if you only have it on a tripod in the middle. So you can add some support stands over here. It does have four rubber feet, which you can twist to kind of uh, level them out if it's not level. It runs off two of these NPF 750s or 770s. Now in the description on their website, it says it doesn't come with any batteries. However, mine came with two GVM branded uh, batteries, each one larger than 4,400 milliamps. And so it says that it can run over 10 hours, which in my use case, it's, you know, I haven't exactly used this for uh, 10 hours in a row, but it definitely lasts a really long time. Now set up on this, a plus. There's absolutely basically nothing to configure. As soon as you put the batteries on the slider and you charge up the remote with the included cable and turn it on, you basically get uh, your little screen lit up here. You get a flashing green light on the slider itself and you're basically good to go. And just start using the slider, panning around. And same with the mobile app, which mobile apps usually are complete hit or miss. You just uh, turn this guy off. And if you've already had the slider paired with the physical remote, just turn the slider off as well. Grab my phone here and turn the slider on, open the GVM slider app. And literally like the second you launch it, it recognizes the slider, you hit connect, you have access to all the same options here. So I can just pan around, can move the slider around. And again, if you had the uh, tilt 
the Z axis, then you can control that as well. But again, unfortunately I do not. Now you totally can use this slider without the pan axis. Obviously it makes it significantly taller. Um, so you can remove this, it just simply unscrews. And then you can just use the motorized slider if you just want this movement without any uh, panning around. Now it says that it has a 11 pound payload for the motor and that's pretty much gonna include everything. So you can't probably have an 11 pound uh, package up top here and then in addition to a tripod head and this, it's pretty much this entire vertical uh, uh, package has to be under that 11 pounds. So this right here is 100% of the uh, speed. So this is going as fast as it can in its horizontal way. And if I pan around, you can see that is 100% of the movements in uh, for the pan. Now you can quite easily dial this down. Uh, I'll just show you for 1%, which is great for, you know, super macro shots where you want really small movements. So hopefully you can see it there. Now to me, it doesn't seem like the pan has as much of a uh, speed difference. And you also can't control them individually, which is kind of a con. So if you set one to 100 or to 1%, both your horizontal movement and your pan is going to be at that same speed. Now, if I were to start adding an angle to this, we can see if we're still getting that same like speed. So I'm currently at 100. Honestly, that's pretty good. I'm about to hit the microphone. So it seems at least at decent angles, you won't really have any trouble with this. Now, before we get into the smart features of what it can do beyond the remote or the app, uh, I wanna talk about my cons for the slider and why definitely it's in the price point bracket that it is because basically every electric slider in this price point is gonna have these same issues. So the first one is definitely noise. I don't know if you've already been hearing it, but I'll run it for a second with the mic about two, three feet away from the motor and you can hear how loud it is. Both motors are definitely still audible. So if you are going to use this for interviews, uh, you definitely want it to be a decent distance away. The other thing is that when you start and stop uh, either of the motors, there's no like ease in and ease out to it. So it's pretty much just like going from, you know, no motion at all to kind of a quick little jolt and some movements. Once you start moving, it's actually very smooth. You can get some really nice macro shots um, and the actual slider movement is smooth and solid. But if you plan on having a sudden change of uh, movement, you're definitely going to get a little bit of a jolt, especially with like a 150 macro, which I have on here. Those movements are just gonna be uh, even bigger in camera. And I would say my last con is the lack of tilt, but that's just because I don't have that one. Um, I will say for anyone who's debating between the two, I personally uh, would pay the extra amount to get the tilt action if it's back in stock because, because the two axis I just feel so limited on. The other thing you have to worry about and basically no slider remotely in this price point has, so I'm not gonna say it's a con to this slider because it's just a more premium feature, is uh, definitely think about your focus. If you're going from a point A to point B and the focus needs to change throughout that, you'll definitely want something like the Nucleus Nano, uh, which I've used in a bunch of videos, to where you can have this slider automatically be going to point A, point B, and then you can be controlling the focus because as the slider's moving, you're not really gonna be able to reach and focus too much. You can, but you're definitely gonna add more movements and vibrations to the shot than you want. So with all that in mind, let's talk about uh, what the auto features of this slider are, because what we've been doing is all the manual movement stuff. Again, I'm pushing when to start and stop. Um, and yeah, and for this, I'm actually gonna use the app because I find it a lot easier, but keep in mind that you can do the same features on both the physical remote and the app itself. All right, so again, we're gonna instantly connect to the slider. And again, we've been talking in the manual mode. So we just have our left and our right, our pan, 
and then the z-axis if we had that. Uh, and that's for video shots. You can also do time lapse here. You can do panorama shots. And then of course you have your settings. I also like that it gives you the battery indicator at the top right uh, on the screen so you can see how much battery this slider has left. But for now I'm gonna to go to video shot and then I'm going to go to auto. So first thing I'm gonna do is go into my points. And basically I'm gonna to go to whatever my starting point is. So maybe it's this right here, all the way on this end of the slider and facing that way. And so I'm gonna hit add point, a success. And now I'm going to go to the other end of the slider and I'll have the camera pointed all the way in like this for the pan. Again, so I'm going to add a point. And so you can add multiple points in between if you're trying to do something more complex, but for now, we're gonna leave this here. So now I'm just going to hit back and now I'm gonna go into auto loop and we can set our start point. So again, if we had a bunch of uh, different points here, we could choose one for various shots but we're gonna keep it easy. I'm gonna say start point A and point B. And then you can set the number of times you want it to perform the action. So just once or twice or 10. Again, if you're doing a uh, interview, you may wanna choose like 50 times or something. So I can just put in like five, I hit done. And then I'm gonna say execution. And so now I can put my phone down and it's just going to start doing uh, the action. And you can see right there is what I was talking about before, where when it comes to a stopping point, it kind of takes this awkward like jolt to stop and then pause and then restart. Gosh, you're in my way. I'm trying to talk to the camera here, geez. And so we'll see it come to the end. Stops and back up, kind of jolts a little bit. And of course at any time, I can hit the pause and it's gonna stop in place. And so what I wanna do now is basically show you samples of what this thing can do, uh, showing what it would look like for an interview by adding this as a second camera angle to this. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now not only do we have that set up, but we have the Pocket 6K Pro with the 15 millimeter Irix lens on the GVM slider. Now I a million percent recommend uh, in addition to putting it on a tripod in the center to have two support stands, little light stands, whatever, on either side because one, you have the side with the batteries that's automatically heavy. And then between the pan rotation and the camera package, it's gonna be a lot of weight. And I just imagine there's gonna be a lot of falling cameras like what almost happened to me a couple weeks ago when my toddler decided to push my camera on a slider that wasn't properly supported on either end. Caught it. <laughs> At the end of the day, this thing is an awesome budget friendly uh, electric slider that's going to add a lot more uh, dynamic movement to a lot of different shots. Again, I love the fact, I can already tell, and I haven't even looked at the footage, that this is just gonna add a nice visual interest. If you are a content creator, you're doing interviews, talking head like this, especially if you don't have a lot of B-roll to cover, it can get extremely boring. And everyone knows about the YouTube jump cuts to you know get 10 or 20% closer. That adds kind of an extra camera feel. But this having movement is just so nice. And when a lot of us don't have extra set of hands to do it manually, the fact that I can just set this up and do it is great. Now, the only thing I'm curious about, it's about four or five feet away from the microphone. And so this is also a good test if you can hear it. I'm gonna be quiet for a second. Can you hear it? Hopefully it's not too bad. I'll add a little text display right here if I heard it while editing this or not. And then you guys let me know down in the comments below if you hear it right now as I'm speaking or in that little empty bit. And I'd love to hear what you guys think about this slider down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.